So welcome to the this week's Midweek How, the non-paranormal part of the From the Shadows podcast, the beginning of my vacation episode. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm starting my two-week vacation um, sitting in the in the lower level of my house talking to the Ozark Howler. I don't know that there's a better way to even start the vacation than doing this. Do you? I, you know, I don't even know what the meaning of the word vacation is anymore. <laughs> because that's everyday life for you? It seems to be. And, and I, you know, I walked out this morning with my dogs. And I have inside dogs. They're Labrador Retrievers, which means they won't go outside unless you go with them. So, you know, the squirrels or chipmunks won't get them. And uh, so I have to... Well, they're scared. Walk, they're scared yeah. of squirrels and chipmunks. They just, they don't, you know. I, they just, they want to. Now my yellow's a little better. She's younger, but my old lab, yeah, he. I had him when I lived up in the suburbs of Minneapolis. You know, it's funny. He was, I don't know, four or five months old, and we went camping up in in very in north of Two Harbors, Minnesota, for you Minnesota listeners, up in the big woods. And there's wolves and shit up there, bears and wolves, right? Yeah. And uh, we had this little pop up, and he. Did not want, once it got dark and, and I, you know, you get to thinking about it and I knew people like this, right? When I, when I was a cop, I, it's the first time I met people that had never been in the dark. And what I mean by that is you grew up and you and the judge come from the country. So you know what it's like at the middle of a cornfield at night, you're in the oh, dark, yeah. Oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Or in the woods, you're in the dark. Well, there's a, there's a segment of society that grows up in the city where there's always, street lights ambient lights right there's they're, so they're never really in the dark dark right yep yep so here i had this little puppy that had lived in in the in the garage of the people that you know they he was wealth and they kept a little they had a little kennel set up in the garage you know i picked him up i brought him to my house and he was he lived in the light and then i got him up in northern minnesota and where wolves and stuff are and you, you could hear them in the distance sometimes and it, it was it, it's pretty spooky for a a grown up that knows what's going on, right? So oh, yeah. he, that little dog, didn't want nothing to do uh, with being out there by himself. So anyway, and that's that segued into his whole life. I've got a big LED flashlight at night. If I'm walking, like in the winter time, I'm going to walk them. I walk them every night between eight and nine, right? Mm -hmm. And when I pick up that flashlight and turn it on, boy, they're jumping ready to go. But if you, if I turn it off and they won't come outside with me. The yellow one will, but the brown one. He's like, no, nope, no, nope. let me see the light. And turn the light on. Okay, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> that's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's that's crazy. So he's got to see where he's going. Like he can't. I I don't know. I think what it is, he thinks I'm I'm tricking him. All right. So so if I turn, I might let him go outside and then close the door sometimes. So if I'm going to be on business call or something like that, I'll put him outside and I, so I'll trick him. They think they're going for a walk. They get outside and I close the door. Oh gosh. Okay. So I think part of it is he's like, bullshit. I ain't going out until I know for sure you're going out. I, I never, I've never heard of dogs that just don't like going outside period. Like if you gave them a chance to go outside, they just don't want to go. Yep. Unless it's like a little dog that doesn't see, like, go out in the, in the snow right, or something. Right now it's so hot that, um, you know, some mornings when that heat hits him right in the, face he wants to turn around right and go right back in the house well i feel the same way mm -hmm. <laughs> i feel the same way i saw this morning on the news uh a bear out in california uh got was uh in a pool. Was, was in the pool got on the got on the uh raft like the little blow up raft <laughs> it was floating around in the pool i mean that's kind of cool i mean i don't know would the bear just kind of leave you alone say hey let let me let me hear. Let me get cooled off. And I'll, yeah, I guess they might. <laughs> they might. Now, do your dogs, like, do they get in the pool? Every day, through five, six, eight, ten times a day. They just jump in and they just love it. They jump in some couple circles, get out, shake off. Well, look, again, that's what I would do. Jump in, <laughs> swim mm -hmm. a couple circles, and shake off. And my yellow one, my my son, youngest son, he jumps in the pool and gets out and jumps back in the pool. And every time she goes with him, she jumps beside him into the water, swims out, and comes back and just does circles. As long as somebody's jumping with her, she'll jump all day. Wow, that's interesting. 
<laughs> <That's it>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I never heard of dog. I've never heard of dogs that just don't want to go outside. You know, uh, when there's nothing really drastic happening weather wise or something. The gal, there's a young gal who bought the house up at the end of my road. Um, she's got, I think five. That's what she started out with five Shih Tzus. <laughs> and and they want to run into the hay field across the road from her. They want to do all this stuff. And I noticed now. I noticed. I only noticed a couple the other morning. And I don't, so sometimes the eagles and the hawks will get them. You know. Oh my eagles gosh. Here, yeah. Close to the river. Yeah. And and to them, that's just another rabbit or something else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. We. I. I think I've talked about it before. We had that happen to a little uh, dog that we had. Uh, owl or hawk just. Grabbed oh, yeah. it, snapped its neck, and dropped it. Like, eh, you know, I don't like this dog being out in the front yard, so I'm going to take care of it. Well, well, that's a bad boy. This turn took a bad turn. I, t- I told you, you know, <laughs> earlier, back up and let's t- let's reiterate. Well, why we haven't had anything for the last two weeks? Yeah, we've struck. Okay, so yeah, so we it's been a ru- it, three for about the last three weeks. Phil, our producer, has been producing a movie that uh, he's been five at night till five in the morning. And then, you know, that kind of screws you up. And and his job as the producer and doing stuff at uh, Good Deed, it's not over just because they're not, you know, filming or doing whatever, five to five. He's still got to go back to the office and do stuff. He just didn't have time and he couldn't get um, organized to, uh, you know, get the stuff up. So... You know, it, it, I get antsy because I can't, I can't physically, you know, I can't, I'm not capable of getting the episodes up. So, um, I depend on Phil to do that. And, uh, you know, and I try not to give him too hard of a time because I know he's busy and he's working hard, but hopefully, uh, he's through that. He he's, they wrapped that movie, I think Saturday. And then we're in the middle. I'm helping uh gary jones we're doing a different movie at the same time and i've you know we've been doing some long days on that when i'm off and stuff and then at night going i friday night we shot i worked all day friday till 3 30 got home took a shower and got over to movie set by 4 15 and i left about 1 15 in the morning and uh then had to get up and work on saturday so it's it's Burning candles at the both at both ends for sure, but uh, um, I think we're all we're you know Phil's doing a pretty cool movie. I think our movie will be pretty cool and it's done. So uh, um, I actually stepped into your shoes. I played an FBI agent in this one that we're doing. Um, the, Did you uh, post a picture or something? I posted a picture of um, Wade and our buddy Sean Ridgeway played SWAT team guys, and actually the uh one of the towns nearby a couple a couple of their actual SWAT team guys came and were on set for a couple of days they brought their they called it the Bearcat the big right. armored, armored vehicle and yeah. uh we had some local police officers we had uh an ambulance and stuff um and it was really it was really making movies is hard in a sense that there's a lot of just not doing anything you know, standing around just to be ready for a couple, what's going to translate into a couple seconds of scene time. And, uh, but, uh, so what we were shooting the other Friday night was the, actually, it's one of the last things we're shooting. It's actually the beginning of the film. And, um, it, I think it's going to be really cool. To, they had this big, huge boom with a camera on the end that came up from Columbus, a company had it and these guys. And so it was up in the air doing a bird's eye view of what we, what we were doing and could close in real close and back up and stuff. And I don't want to give away too much of the details about why they use that boom, but it was the first time I saw it It was cool. It was really cool. But, um, so yeah, so but I, I just always feel like such a fraud when I play like a like a prison guard or a FBI agent because I don't know I don't know how to hold a gun. That's I don't, that's you you know what I'm saying. I, that's I hold, realistic. They don't most, either. Most of them. <laughs> that's why you call the SWAT team. <laughs> yeah, and it was interesting hearing the real SWAT guys talk about you know how this situation would unfold. 
you know, that you were, you know, storming into this lair of this um, suspected killer. And they said, yeah, the SWAT team would go in first, take control of the situation, clear it, and then let the FBI come in. And why would the FBI? Because it was an FBI federal case, or why would the FBI even be involved? From what I understand in this story, this one, um, it's a serial killer. And so it's kidnapping and serial killer. And the FBI agent has been chasing this. This particular FBI agent has been chasing this serial killer for quite a few years. And they think they finally have him. And uh, they don't. So, <laughs> so Oh, you of, spoiled it. They don't. Well, that happens in the first 30 seconds. So you just say... I think everybody, I think everybody's going to figure that out real quick, but that's the only thing I'm giving away. But we've done some really cool stuff. Um, we filmed a lot of stuff out at my family's farm out there at the campground. Um, so it's it's really gonna it's really gonna look cool. You know, we did stuff in in Galleon and Crestline, and so yeah, it's really it's 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 really gonna look cool. And um, the actors that uh, played the leads, a couple of them for California. The other, the other guy, guys playing the lead FBI agent is the lead singer of a '90s uh, pop group, uh, Blessed Union of Souls. I remember that. I don't remember what they sang, but I remember that because I always thought that was a crazy name. Didn't they get something <laughs> smaller than that, shorter? Uh, they had a, uh, they had a really, uh, they had a big hit called "I Believe." They had another song called uh, "She Likes Me for Me," and so Elliot, the, you know, Elliot, the lead singer. So he's kind of, me, him and Wade are kind of working right now. We're trying to, trying to, trying to do the theme song for the movie. And Ellie, I think, is going to sing it. So, so we're well, doing By this. golly. Yeah, we're working on that. So he's, he's actually from You're Cincinnati. You're going to get like a dozen credits on this movie. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. FBI agent number three, uh, producer, location scout. And, hey, and, how come you can swing number one? So we had to have a sad that's, El- that's Elliot. That's Elliot. That's the guy uh-huh. who blessed you to the soul. soul. So, no, I didn't. Uh, I couldn't swing number one. And then uh, the guy playing the, the next FBI agent, he's actually a local guy who's 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 done a really really good job. So for a low budget, this is going to be a this is going to be a really solid movie, I think. So, and then when we get done, I think this week we'll probably wrap doing everything for that one, and then. August we start uh, Apple, which is the second. One. You second. start which one? It's called Appleseed. So it's it's kind of a horror movie about uh, tied in the Johnny Appleseed. That's all I. That's oh all my gosh! Thought, so. <laughs> How do you keep a straight face when you're talking to people about being in movies? <laughs> Come on, what? It's it's very interesting. I've read I've read part of the script. It's it's not what you think. That's because I don't think about things like that. <laughs> I don't even know what Johnny, who Johnny Appleseed was in the poem. Well, Johnny Appleseed wasn't it a yeah. poem or a story, short story. No, Johnny Johnny Appleseed's a real person. <laughs> okay. Well, he is Jonathan Chapman. Okay, and what was his story? He planted apple trees. Um, he started as he as the Ohio and Pennsylvania and Indiana and them were settled. <laughs> He was out ahead of the real settling of those areas, and he was pl- he planted apple orchards so that when people were traveling west, there would be food. They'd have uh, opportunities to, ha- you know, if they couldn't hunt or uh, times were tough, there'd at least be apples. There's a lot. There's apple trees in our our area that uh, there was when I was a kid that they could uh, trace could back to this guy. Trace back to him. Yep. Is that what killed all the chestnut trees? I don't know. I don't know. Are all the chestnut trees dead? I don't What's know. That one, but that's a whole other story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, there's there's the horror movie. We can call it Chestnut. That's the next one. <laughs> now you okay? So you want to hear a horror story? Now I you're, do. You're you're a, you're a truck guy. You're a mm-hmm. vehicle guy. Mm-hmm. So Christy's and the apple. price of them will put you in horror now. Yes, because I started looking yesterday at used Suburbans to train my... You just my... got a Suburban like two years ago. It's, okay, it's a 2018, and I did buy it probably three years ago, two or three years ago. 
and she wants me to trade it in on a newer one. Why? And she just wants me to trade it in on a newer one. So, because it's probably the last vehicle I ever buy, that whatever the next one is. And I will tell you, the prices of them, even used, it will be, it would be the last thing I'd ever buy. I mean, seventy thousand dollars for a two-year-old. One? Yeah, I about fell over. I mean, the monthly payment was a like eleven hundred dollars. I can't. I'm. I, I'm like I can't afford this. Like what? I mean, that's that's insane. That's a that's a, that's a really nice house payment. I don't know about that one. Let's say you bought a house. But, <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! I about fell over. I about fell over. I couldn't believe it. Well, I was, I was half tempted just to buy an old '70s Blazer and drive that instead. That'll cost you twenty thousand if it's very nice at all. Yeah, but you know some of those you, pictures you sent me that your brother redid. I mean, mm-hmm. I, to me, those are that's worth twenty. $20,000. Well, I think at the end of the day, in 20 years, a 77 Blazer will still be running. In 20 years, I don't know if a 2018 Suburban is going to be because the electronics package. You know what I mean? There's so much oh, yeah. yep. plastic and there's so much stuff that I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, got a 90, I got a 97 Chevy as my normal driver. So. If, if thanks to eBay and, and UPS, I should have a new air conditioner for it today or tomorrow. <laughs> and I just keep on keeping on. Well, I also believe in 20 years that a 77 Blazer would probably be worth 40000 whereas a 2018 I I've Suburban... seen some already bring 40000 Yeah. But, but they're original. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I but a new, but a today's one. That's not going to be worth anything. It's going to be worth ten thousand bucks or whatever you can get. Well, it. but hold on a second. In in, in twenty years, as, as the rate of inflation is going, ten thousand bucks would be a tank of gas. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe so. Right. Maybe so. Uh, I just hope that you know, twenty years from now, I can, I'm I'm still around to see something. That's what I. Well. I do too. My buddy Ed called the other day, and yeah, he's he's worried about it. he's worried about it. He thought maybe he made you so mad that you quit doing the show. <laughs> well, I thought I that was one of the thoughts that went through my head was, man, what's Ed gonna do if we don't if we don't get a new episode up? He's gonna quit riding the town. There's no reason to download anything. <laughs> no reason, no reason mm-hmm. to go to town. He said he listened to me and Joe Rogan. Yeah, that's our that's his two downloads, and he didn't. You know oh, if, if Joe would be worth it without me. That's kind. Of, that's a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Now I now I will tell you the other night when we were uh, filming doing that scene, I had to get down and crouch down. Okay, and I'm in the crouching position, and then I got to get up and like and like walk fastly fast to another position. And I'm down there in the crouch position, and Gary's like they're setting the camera, and he goes, he goes, scoot up here, scoot up. And it was at that moment where I realized I can't. I, I I'm down on my knee. I can't do anything. I'm gonna be lucky to get back. You're up. not the man you used to be. Is that when it just hit you? Oh my god! Oh my gosh! It's it's awful to think that you know I, I can't get down on my knees and then just jump right back. And I never, not that I ever really could, because my knees were always bad. But holy smokes! Like getting old ain't easy. You know, I mean, where's that song at by Jay Z? I think I think that song was written old. by Crystal Gale, wasn't it? I don't know. I don't know. He wasn't getting old, ain't easy. Loving you ain't easy. One of the two. I don't remember. I thought it was one of the easy. same with this show, right? I, th- I thought it was loving us ain't easy and getting yeah, old ain't easy. I thought it was don't yeah. don't make my brown eyes blue. Wasn't that her song? Well, that too, right? I you know I think she had a bunch of songs. <laughs> Uh, and then, and then, uh, in the since we last were on, we we had our one hundredth Hunsberger family reunion. Oh wow! Last last week, one hundred. Who was my, the oldest person there? How you know who was my, my uncle Wes was ninety is ninety two, and my uncle Owen is ninety. And my uncle Wes now they didn't go. He him and his family didn't go for a long time because this. 
reunion used to be on Father's Day. So they would do something else on Father's Day for, you know, whatever years. But Wes, Wes figured he, you know, the first 20 that he was alive, he was definitely at those reunions from the time he was born. Cause, cause my grand, cause you know, that that's, that's a, the good old farm families, the Huntsburgers. And that's what they did. They, on Sundays, you know, they took a car. Well, back then they took a horse and buggy and then there's, then they'd take cars and they, you'd go visit mm-hmm. with people, you know? And, um, in fact, I've seen the old newspapers from like the little town where we grew up and, in the newspapers, it would have details of what families did on Sundays, like who went and visited who, like right. it was a, like a little gossip column. Like, like that was that was the, the that was what was so that was what was going on with those people. Yeah, that was the that was the news, and because you couldn't look at it on Facebook or or not everybody had a telephone or whatever, you could see who came to ta- you know who went out to the farm and <laughs> so you know family reunions back then were huge. You know, because it was a whole year's worth of visiting people in one spot, you know, and uh, and it was actually, it was a, you know, they really pushed to get a big turnout um, because it was the 100th uh, reunion, you know, 100th time of getting together. And they didn't know, you know, last couple of years it had kind of, you know, 20, 30 people would show up and um, they're like, man, is this worth doing? And uh I think we had 117 people, you know, show up and we started counting and we're like, there's a probably 250 people that could show up if they all showed up, hmm. which you're never going to get because everybody's busy. But. What do you want everybody to show up? I mean, everybody knows those, some of those people and, and some of the times you're related to them. So do you really want them all to show up? <laughs> uh no, but I did get I did get the most brownie points because neither one of my sisters showed up. So I got. Why don't they like your sister? Well, they do. They do like my sisters, but they didn't show up. Don't they live just right there, handy? My stepsister does. My other sister lives in Cleveland, and and they just couldn't come. <laughs> Guess <laughs> so. So I uh-huh. so I scored the I scored the most brownie points. That was that was the best part. <laughs> Let's get get the right part. But uh, you gonna inherit any extra because of that? No, no, oh. no. But I did get an extra helping of ice cream because there was, well, there you go. You're a trumper at heart, aren't you? A trumper. Oh, uh, I don't even. I did actually t- tell our buddy Stacy Brown today that I would vote for Trump if he promised Bigfoot disclosure. What the government knew about Bigfoot. I said I, I would. I would actually consider voting for him, but that would be the only way. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, everybody. That's, not, that's yeah. That's, that's, that's it. Let's just leave it at that, right? Yeah, Let's that's, just leave it that's, at that. That's, that's, that's right. The the down in the 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 down in the in the dumps episode is right here today. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. We're all old. The world's going to keep on clicking without us. And yeah. oh yeah. Well, I did. I did hear. Uh, so I listened to another podcast. And they were they were having they're having a series on the Patty Hearst um, kidnapping story. All right. Okay, and they made a great point. Okay, and they said, you know, everybody in this day and age is screaming and crying about how the world's ending and it's so bad and oh my god, the country's going to fall apart. And they said, does anybody know history? And has anybody ever read about the 50s 60s and 70s and they said it isn't that long ago when in the 70s every other day a bomb went off in this country somewhere because yeah, but some- the difference is those were set by and i don't mean to go down this path with you but they were set by americans against americans they weren't guatemalans rape robbing and pillaging the american society to free will um well see that's the difference not really you know not I mean? really not really. that, 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 that wasn't that wasn't a bunch of foreigners here. That was they might have been under some foreign uh, direction, but they were Americans on Americans, with the exception of the Puerto Ricans that that set off a bomb in the U.S. Capitol and then get in trouble. But that's another whole other story. <laughs> uh, well, I don't think it's quite that black and white. No pun intended. Why did you bring race into this? 
I didn't. I just, I'm just. See, here you shades. go. You want to get me canceled, aren't you? Shades. I did bring you race. You want to get me canceled that quick. What are you talking about? You brought up the Guatemalans. I didn't, no. say, I didn't say anything about race. No. But I'm just saying that there was a lot. I mean, this the lot crazier stuff has gone on. It's just this everything now is so magnified by from social media. Yes, the that's be, the people nowadays don't know crazy. No, I don't think they do. Yes, the, on on I'm not on TikTok, but on Twitter and some of these things, the shit that people goes viral on, I, it doesn't even raise my eyebrow. You know what I mean? A lot of it's ignorance. It's not even some real crazy shit, right? Now yeah. cussing. You're gonna get me in trouble for cussing on this episode. Are you still yeah, there? You still there? No, I yeah. ain't there. What happened to you there? They Nothing. cut me off when I started cussing. No, who? Who's cutting I don't you know. off? No, it just got quiet all of a sudden. I thought that, oh, that was it. The FCC no. got us. No. And you mentioned government Bigfoot. They they did their stuff and come in here and shut us down. <laughs> Not yet. They may. You never know. You no. never know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, so there you go. That's what that's what I've been doing for the past couple of weeks. What what yep. what have you been doing in the Ozarks? Nothing. I swim and I walk the dogs. That's I've it. Been, yeah, I've been. I, I'll be honest with you. This morning, I vacuum packed a bunch of three hundred eight bullets. Really? Yeah. You know, I've been reloading a bunch of three hundred eight. I had a bunch of three hundred eight brass, and then I had a bunch of Sierra one hundred sixty eight grain hog points that I bought over the years. So I'm gonna sit here and reload a bunch. So I loaded. Th- Reloaded 300 rounds of 308 ammo, and I put them in the. I was just going to put them in an ammo can, but they rattle around so bad. But my wife's got this fancy food saver, the vacuum pack stuff. So I just put them in little 50 pound, 50 round bags, and I vacuum pack and I sit them all in an ammo can. So I wasn't going to say that because then our some of our listeners might be turned off on it. But, but why? Because you're using your wife's vacuum thing <laughs> to 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 keep the bullets from rattling. What? No, just just uh, yeah. I'm just sitting there stockpiling brass and ammo, and and uh, I don't think he would get ready for the government Bigfoots to be launched, the Bigfoot <laughs> drones to be launched against us. Hey, look! As long as you're ready, I know where to come. So, hey. Speaking speaking of speaking of Bigfoot drones, okay. So um, um, our buddy Stacy Brown was on Sasquatch Chronicles, and he had sent me he he put together this. Um, four piece documentary because the, the cameraman he works with is a non was a non believer in Bigfoot. And so the guy said, Hey, I want you to show me, you know, make, when are you going to show me some proof? And so is it Stacy had sent me these four things that make up this DVD because he wanted, he wanted me to watch it and tell him what I thought and give him, uh, give him a little line or something so he could use and, um, it was really good, and they really went into detail about them approaching the Florida uh, Wildlife Commission or whatever about all the emails. And I don't know if we've ever talked about this. If, if we talk about him doing the FOIA request for the all the emails. I think the, so. And then they said basically they're not going to tell him anything. Yeah, they shut him down after they said it would cost him right. $12,000 to, to get these emails and stuff. And um, – so, but it was a really good doc. It was a really good doc. And that's what, and that's kind of what um, turned the guys a bit because Stacy knew they had talked to at least three Florida fish and wildlife guys who on the, on the record with them told them about experiences or stories that had been reported to them. And of course their the official thing comes back from the state saying, well, we don't have any stories, but we have 70,000 emails that talk about it. <laughs> which doesn't make any sense. No, uh, what you mean is people are telling them the story. It's not their story. Well, no, they just, you know, Stacy and those guys ask about any email that talked about reports, any reports they received, or just any emails, inner office emails uh, about the subject, talking about the subject or talking about reports they received. And they said they didn't receive any reports but there was like 70,000 emails that talked about it. He's, that doesn't make any sense. What are they talking about it? And I think one of the things they said was, well, maybe, maybe like government advertising that included language about Bigfoot. Like what, that doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> you know, like, like, uh, like Ron DeSantis was running a, an ad 
for a president. Bigfoot cover up operation or what? No, like he was running an ad and used a Bigfoot in the ad, like as a joke or you know, that's kind of what they were saying. And um, so wow. it's, it's it's pretty interesting. I, I we'll have to put a link up uh, if everybody can go check wants to go check that out. Um, it's it's a really good documentary. But he told me this morning that um, they think they're you know going to start doing maybe like a horror movie. And I pitched I pitched us for the movie. So right. maybe you and I can get to go to Florida and uh, be, I'm in ready a, to go. be in a Stacey Brown production. I'm you ready know? to go. I'm actually planning a trip to Florida. But that's a whole nother thing. No, mm-hmm. see, see, there you go. You're you're going to plan the trip to Florida and Stacy's going to hear this. And he's going to be like. Man, the holler comes to Florida. I got. I'm actually. I'm actually planning maybe two different trips to Florida. Well, are you going to do something special, or are you just no? Going? One of them's maybe spring break. I'm planning on going to Florida. Um, I'm going to fly down to Key West and um, hang out. I heard there's some six-toed cats in Hemingway's house, and then the other one, my son's in the Navy, and his ship is scheduled to be in 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 Florida. At some point between now and January, and when he goes to down there, I'm gonna we're probably gonna go down there and meet him. So there you go, mm-hmm. there you go. Well, we'll have to we'll have we'll have to let Stacy Brown know that, and then he can do Absolutely. his film do his film yeah. around our convenience. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well. You know, I I'm gonna I'm gonna get started on my vacation, which is nothing. But uh, um, before I jump off, you got any big plans for the Fourth of July? No, I don't. I thought I was gonna have a bunch of family in, but then they're not. You know, there's been a change of plans, so I'm gonna try to keep cool. I'll walk the dogs and swim with the dogs, and load bullets. That's what I'm gonna be doing. I might cut the grass, but you know how it rains. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think Christie's mentioned to me about making a brisket. So, you know, if you're in if you're in the area, I might have a s- smoked brisket. There you go. Okay, I'll, I'll keep that on. My, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll talk to you later, buddy. See you. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows we are out <laughs> God only knows what's hiding in-